Welcome to Option Market Watch Show. This is your host, Manoj. And today I have John Chong as my guest, as my new Option Market Wizard, and who's going to share with us his amazing option trading journey. And uh, welcome, John. Uh, welcome to the show. Hi, Manoj. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. So, John, um, for the viewers who are uh, watching this show, would you please just tell a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, and etc., to give them an, an idea about yourself? Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is John, John Chong. Okay. I am an IT person. Actually, for the last 25 years, my main focus is in the IT and regional IT as well as the global IT. Practically, I'm the IT guy, so we are quite boring in life. Okay, after 25 years, is I think it's more than enough for for me. So, John, when did you start investing, and when was the time when you started option trading in particular? Okay, I okay, pre spring I heard of option and attend some of the option course ten years ago, whereby I personally, after trying a few trades, not not so-called not in favor so i stopped for quite a while until last uh, i think in year 2018 or 2019 okay i think should be last august so should be the 2019 okay whereby okay, my daughter actually who are studying the degree course in account and finance and would like to know about all this kind of the uh, trading or this kind of the financial instrument or derivative instrument. So I accompany and roll her to the course so that I accompany as well. Then is the time that when I learned from you, Manoj, uh, from the Option Pandit, and then found that it's almost after the 10 years, it's almost everything changed. With all the infrastructure, technology, everything changed, as well as the strategy that you introduced. Okay, so it changed my perspective from uh, the option from purely uh you know buy buy food and buy call life is good kind of the pattern into a uh, more towards the seller, so more towards the premium or collection or the credit kind of the collection. So it also it's also so called changed my way of trading and look at it from a maybe different way. Okay, so you actually started from 2019 so as to say august 2019 yes. is when you gotten into option trading all over again yes i think i attend the july course then after that do the funding of the account only first week of august it is the how to say first week of august when the fund is in i remember i think i traded on the seven uh seven or eight of august okay first wow. week is wow. very First week is very amazing. I, I suppose to buy the put in April. At the end, I actually accidentally buy the call. Yeah, we <laughs> all make that mistake, you know. We are beginning a journey. We wanted to buy call, but actually ended up buying put. Or yeah. wanted to buy put, but ended up buying call. Yeah, and then the worst... Wanted to uh, buy, but we ended up selling. We all make those mistakes. Now. Yeah, and then the worst case is whatever you mentioned, it happened exactly. You mentioned look at the contract size. My one by default is 10. So not only I buy the wrong call or wrong food, I buy the wrong call, okay? I actually buy in 10 contracts. And buy 10 times, my God. Yes, correct. So within a few hours, the, the loss is already nearly 1,000. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. So that's why, that's why I remember it clearly. I always uh, remember that one. Now, John, that brings me to the point that uh, in education then really becomes very important to have yes. the right process in place, having the right skills in place and right systems in place. So yes. think about financial education per se and literally knowing about option trading and getting the right education, uh, right platform skills. What do you think really plays part in succeeding trading as a business? I think for finance, so-called education, it is the best practice or this is the best pre uh, approach that you we actually learn from somebody who already have a proven track record with a systematic approach, okay? And learn from the basic. Uh, don't be so 
urgent or so in an urgent mode or aggressive mode in suddenly I want it all, I want it fast. Because now the day a lot of people actually want it. It's just like in the IT, when we doing the M&A, the management always think that tomorrow all the system will be up and running. They don't even give you the lead time to implement everything as per what you want. So even in my background, we do a lot of M&A or so-called we do a lot of new setting up. A lot of the management will always think that, oh, today we buy, the company name is up, everything will fall into places. However, it's just like IT, every time you need the lead time, especially from the, from the knowledge wise, that you have the knowledge. However, technically know how, and then whether you can follow exactly like what the so-called the what the what the um, syllabus or what the plan or strategy mentioned, can you follow through? Yeah, so it's really around preparing very well and persevering through proper discipline, and then making sure that you can preserve your profits to really make yes. it for you. Yes, and test right. because, before you go with the real market. Yes, because a lot of time when you don't follow through, don't believe the system is one thing. So your emotion will not stable. And the moment that you are always in doubt or question, so when the market moves up and down, you will tend to change your belief or conviction from the beginning when you're placing the trade. And so, I remember how much you value education. You, in fact, enroll your daughter also into the uh, financial education program, my option trading program as well. That, yeah. correct? Yes, that's right. Actually, not only the PPI we attend, we at I think we attend the two preview, three month or six month interval time. The first time she couldn't get anything. Okay, she just think that oh that is an option trading. I said no, that is not the option trading. You got to listen another time. So we attend another preview, then just right that uh just right at the moment that she already graduate and waiting for the transcript and the so called ceremony. So we attend the course and not only we attend the course, we also attend the iron condo also. And for me, not only that, I also, I also joined into the OPIC, the one of the, the privileged so-called program, invited program, and to learn more sophisticated and the so-called more structural kind of the way of investing. So as a result of a very a uh, structured, structured approach mm. and a proper education mm. as well. Mm. And uh, you can all, you have also made all type of mistakes that we review in the program, going through all that. Uh, Practically every, mention, every look, mistake. Yeah, every every you mistake that you mentioned. Like how much is your profit now um, as, as a result of all the education that you have done, all the process that you have done? Okay, until yesterday, I think it's slightly over 100K. Slightly over US $100,000, is yes. that correct? Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's awesome. So you started in August 2019, and mm. uh, it's almost about a year, roughly. And oh, yeah, 13 months. US dollar 100,000 um, and plus. Mm. Okay, so what has been working for you, John? Would you share a little bit with the viewers what strategies or what are your most favorite strategy? What worked for you and what didn't work for you? Okay, I would say <clears throat> from the beginning, right, I have a very firm, so-called firm conviction into the credit spread. Okay, credit because, spread. Yeah. Because whatever the so-called basic or fundamental, like the buy, call, buy, put, don't suit me. Okay, it's just like the apple that I share. Okay, the moment I buy, it actually instantly against me. So, the I think the second trade onward, majority I focus on the credit spread. As and subsequently, uh, the credit spread become two way, which is the iron condo. So. Now, majority of my position is in the credit spread as well as the iron condo. So for my viewers who do not know what is a credit spread, a credit spread is a strategy where you involve two options and both the options are on same expiry and same underlying. And you choose, it's a limited risk, limited profit strategy. 
but it gives you higher probability. And if your account size is smaller, you can still use credit spreads as opposed to uh, buying either straight calls or straight puts. It's a, it's a fantastic strategy uh, to implement. And you could do it on both the sides, on the call sides or the bullish side, as well as on the bearish side. So that is what a credit spread. You can watch and read uh, more about spreads on Option Pundit. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a brief uh, shout out on what is a credit spread. And what doesn't work for you, John? Uh, doesn't work for me is uh, always the uh, most simple, the so-called more speculative, which is the uh, direct call buying or direct put buying. I <clears throat> on and off trying it. However, my success rate is very low. I think 20% that I make money and 80% I lose money. However, contra to all this, when I do the credit spread, I think 80 to 95% my winning rate compared to the so compared to the direct buying call or buying put. That's why I am more toward the seller side. Yeah, so seller, some people understand that selling is like you have to sell naked put option or you need to sell naked call option. No, that is, that's not the only way. There are many ways yeah. to be an option seller where you can collect option premium. And seller is basically when you are collecting time decay in your favor. Those yeah. strategies are called option selling. Now, uh, John, so you found um, your mojo or your wonderful success in the credit spreads and your accuracy or your winning rate, winning ratio is also great. Could you share a little bit about how do you go about selecting a credit spread? How do you construct? Like if somebody who has a knowledge, what is a credit spread? Let's say they have gone through proper education and they know what is it all about. So how do you go about it? How do you select the underlying? How do you select maybe a particular stride? Give, give us some insights about that. Okay, normally I play the so-called credit spread more toward the index. Uh, majority is in the XPX, sometimes XPY, and also IoT. Okay, most is in the XPX. Okay, and now even some of the stock that is more stable one, okay, based on the technical analysis, sometimes I do play the so-called iron condo which is the credit spread on both sides also. Yeah, it, and condors are also amazing because you can play either upside, you can play downside, you mm -hmm. can play credit condor, you can play debit condor. In fact, an example that we had last night, mm -hmm. in fact, as part of the inner circle where we had this particular trade, mm -hmm. uh, we invested only $1.80 and we said, okay, this is a speculative trade, limited risk, mm -hmm. that's the only one we'll lose. And finally ended up uh, at around uh, $11 plus profit on that. Mm -hmm. 11 means times 100. That's $1,100 mm -hmm. per contract. So it can really be amazing. Now, when you are looking at um, the stocks you have selected for credit spread, then mm -hmm. how do you go about selecting a strike? <clears throat> Normally, okay, for me, I do do short DTE, which is within seven days, even up to 65 days. That is, I think, 100% of my trade is always within the 65 day and when i do it if i own if i don't play the iron condo play the iron condo is always one one sigma if i don't play the iron condo normally i always wait until the bottom of the so-called bottom of the day only then i put in a 75 or 80 80 percent probability strike price which is meaning could this is the current price i will put below up to 75 or 80 Okay. Well, that's that's really cool. So in a way, you are structuring a high probability trade in a high probability environment. So mm -hmm. you are in a way doubling your chances to make sure that the trade goes in your favor. That's yes. a smart move. Yeah, because for me, if I want to be the seller, I want to know I want to know the limited risk, which is from the so-called opic. You always share with it with us that how you manage your money and how you do the risk allocation. That's why I personally more prefer the credit spread rather than selling put. Because from the credit spread, we already know our risk. That is the maximum. It depends on your point, which is 5 point, 10 point, even up to 20 point, or maybe 100 point. It's already predefined. We know yeah. what we will lose maximum. So Correct. Correct. even losing so-called, when every time you lose a trade, you may not feel well, or may not be happy, 
However, that is just daily, daily. To me, it's daily puzzle. Okay, you have to get over with it. Yeah, uh, so however, media location really becomes key. I yeah. mean, one of the things that we were looking at, uh, you know, we as a trader, we go through the emotions of greed, emotions of fear. And at the same time, sometimes it does not really maximize our potential of the trade. Yeah. And we need to look at how do we manage that uh, position better. And uh, one of the key secrets that we found was through money allocation. But that requires yeah. a lot of practice. And I also don't want to give impression to our viewers that making money is so easy. So, yeah. yes, you have made $100,000 plus in last uh, 12 months, roughly mm -hmm. trading options. But I'm sure you must have some losing trades or losing month as well. So can you give an insight when you go through the loss or when you have a losing trade, what do you do? How do you manage your emotions and your capital? Okay. Uh, actually, until today, I'm still learning how to manage my emotion. Okay. Because uh, when you do, okay, for credit spread, uh, we know that that is a limited risk. Okay. Maximum is a 10 point. Okay. If the trade is 10 point different. Okay. So every time you go in, if you do iron condo, most of the time, the, which I think the ratio is around three to seven, which is 30% of your so-called premium collection, 70% that in the event you lose, you have to lose that much. Okay. So that is a 10 point difference. And even until yesterday or the day before, the goal suddenly come down because of expiration date, I also losing money. That's okay. great. And because I don't follow the system, okay, I, before seven days, I should get out, whereby I already have 4K of the so-called 4K of the profit, yet because I think personal, personal greed is into picture again, that Monday suddenly without any so-called any signal, when all the stock market is coming down, gold price supposed to shoot up, I should go into the zero, I should go into the zero time D zero DTE time decay at the end is it also go down which is to me unexpected however is predictable because when I have the profit which is based on the money allocation I should get out okay. when I get okay. more than 70% I should get out at the end instead of 4k that I I actually lose back another 5k that is the first day that losing then yesterday I exit because not in the mood of trading so I want to sleep and I put a so-called uh, open order there without so-called cancelling it. If cancelling it, then I may get a few hundred percent kind of the so-called uh, profit margin also. Yeah. So it again becomes a fine balance between the risk and reward. And what I'm sensing from this conversation is that you have defined a process. You have defined a system on how you're going to trade to the extent that it really becomes boring. Of course, there will be profits, there will be losses, but you are managing it within your capital allocation so you yeah. can tolerate the swings that takes place. Yes, I always remember that you mentioned throughout the clause that financial, so-called fin uh, option trading after some time is quite boring. Okay, you need to find something to do. Okay, for me, is maybe I already reached that stage because the first three months, I think I remember, first three months, of my trading in a very aggressive mode, actually I already made more than 80K. However, yeah. subsequently I become aggressive, okay, and I actually give back quite a lot. Yeah. Give back so almost. months you already generated 50K on your, on your uh, portfolio. I think three months, uh, the first month, 12K, second month, 20, okay. and then second month is 25K. Third month is 50K. So actually three, three and a half months, I actually generate more than 88, 88K. More than 80K in three months itself. Yes, correct. And, uh, now, if you are comfortable, can you share with the viewers what was the capital size on which you made 80K? Uh, actually, the first three months, I'm only using 50K. So on 50K, you generated 80K profits. Yes, correct. So that's approximately 160% growth in your portfolio in less than three months, roughly. Yes, in an aggressive mode. In a very aggressive mode. Then what yeah. happened? Uh, I become so-called arrogant, or so-called I become more aggressive, and the market teach me a lesson. <laughs> yes, then the market in in a typical so-called boring way, be in the November or December, the market should up seven percent, five percent. Then subsequently in the December, they should up seven percent. 
So and that's within, what I remember we had private coaching sessions. Yeah. Yeah, we mm-hmm. went through and we said, okay, you need mm-hmm. to dial in and yeah. structure your approach. So uh, since then, I believe that you have been a consistently profitable trader. Yes, I think from the January or end of January or beginning of the February, we have a private coaching. Yeah. Okay? And then I rethink of the way, is it I trading for what is my, what is my motive? What is my so-called agenda, right? Okay, in terms of the option trading. So I redefine it. And even though I still use the same strategy, like more the more toward the credit spread as well as the IM condo, however, I change it to a more time decay way, which is the seller and depend on the time decay rather than based on the market movement. And, and since John, then, I remember that you are you are a as you mentioned uh, that you are uh, constantly in a learning mode, <clears throat> and I do remember that that you showed that in your actions, whether you know, if I ask you to train some uh, people or whether I want you to become a trading buddy or come and guide some new beginner traders, share your experiences, you're always there. Yeah, always yeah. guiding um, other people as well. Yeah. And one of the things that I loved when you shared in private coachings with me was that you learn even from beginners. You remember what mistakes you did so you don't make it again. So yeah. can you share a little bit of importance about community? Mm, okay. How does it help versus being just a single trader and trading at your own? How does community help? Okay. Uh, I think the community support, right? Okay. Or the a group of the buddies trading will be good because sometimes it's not only we are sharing the so-called idea of trading and a lot of time is more toward that. We know sometimes it's just, it just another bad day and a lot of time is good day or good trade. Everyone can benefit from it. And a lot of time is you can get the support or you can provide the support to the community so that everyone can learn together. Because I believe option trading is kind of the is kind of the group effort thing. Okay. You may have a different opinion. Maybe I sell, you buy. Okay. At different time, at different point of time, actually both of us can make money. Okay. To me it is kind of the win win situation. Okay. Just hope hopefully that we are not both into the lose lose so-called lose, lose, lose kind of the situation, meaning when yeah. you lose, then you, you clear the position or then the next moment is your turn to lose. No. Mm-hmm. So it, to me, option trading is kind of fun. Okay. It's actually outside the IT kind of the boring job. Uh, to a lot of people, IT is very, you know, is very interesting. However, after 25 years, you will realize mm, it depends, it depends. Okay. If everything in and out you already know, there is very not much thing for you to anticipate. In fact, I remember in one of the sessions, I think that was in Singapore in Suntec City, where in your your client happened to be in the same meeting room as well. Oh uh, yeah, my, my vendor actually. Your vendor, yeah. yeah your yeah, vendor I, I, I actually I introduced quite a number of the friend associate, right? Okay, to the cost to, to your cost also. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, John, um, I looked at your uh, patterns of trading and uh, you are one of those of, who is very disciplined in terms of your trades and risk management. And as I like to say that you're not a trader, you are a risk manager of your trade. So can you share a little bit perspective, a little bit thoughts about risk management, why it is important and how you go about it? Risk management. Uh, personally, I think I'm still learning because a lot of time when I violate the rule, right, then I pay a very shitty price. <laughs> then I will re-emphasize that I need to follow the rule. Okay. <clears throat> so for me personally, what my experience is before the trade, I want to know my maximum risk. Mm. That's why I'm not into the... Even though I do sell put. However, I don't, I, I'm not in favor of the majority sell put. I always want to sell the credit spread. Okay. So even the, um, because I think the credit spread, I can, I can manage the risk better, which is I already know upfront what is my maximum life. Right. Okay. And then subsequently, I can do the adjustment. Because sell put a lot of time, kind of difficult. Because when market too much movement, okay, since you already have a position, you will dare to do anything. For for credit spread is 
when my credit spread look like losing money, the other side, okay, I will just adjust and then collect back some of the credit so that to neutralize it, which is more easy for me in terms of using the so-called grid to neutralize my risk. Okay. Uh, for selling put, I cannot, I cannot do another way of selling call. Yeah. Oh, John, it looks you're in a very different, um, uh, different mode now. Well, I remember, you know, the beginner John coming in mm -hmm. and still trying to make so many mistakes. And this conversation, mm -hmm. you're talking about Greeks, you're talking about adjustments, you're talking about, you know, how you are collecting credits and how you look at the margin. Wow. So that uh, so seems like option trading has really become boring for you now. Mm. I share some some thoughts for uh, uh, new <clears throat> who will find it to be overwhelming, who may find it confusing, uh, sometimes uh, like risky, increasing the heartbeat. What would you what would you say to them? How is how does the entire process looks like? Okay, uh, first few months maybe there is confusion. Actually, after thirty months, I still have confusion because the market every day is a new day. Okay, especially in year 2020, I think there is maximum or there is a record up day or there is a record down day that for the last 10 years of the market never seen before. So I believe in a, we are in a time that is full of opportunity. Okay, it's just when the opportunity presents itself, are you against the opportunity or are you in line with the opportunity? That is one thing. Another thing is the risk management or our trading pattern because option trading since it's a trading meaning we buy and sell or we sell and buy it's just a different timing okay so a lot of people looking for fast cash whereby to me is you can make big money just like me within the first three months or four months however after that you when the market or when you are not in your lucky mode again what are you going to do? Do you have other strategy? Do you have your enough emotion to make sure of it? Because now, even the market up or even the market down, for me, is is already been planned. So maybe emotionally, oh, today I lost a few thousand. You are not in good mood. But after one hour, you know, as long as you are still in the market, which is from you, I follow, okay? A lot of time is you always mention win or lose is always there. It's just your winning ratio, is it higher? Or when you win big and lose small, or you are just when you win small and then you lose big. I always say, okay, believe that one and I always follow and how to manage the risk that I hope that when I win, I win much more. And the losing side, I'll always manage and do a lot of adjustment to minimize the credit until it may be zero life or lose a bit, then yeah. learn from the mistake. And we have seen many huge market moves, mm. especially in last uh, one year, we have seen record moves, as you said rightly. And um, absolutely, that mm -hmm. is the secret. Uh, and I'm thank I'm very happy you still remember that part, mm -hmm. you know, on the formula, the secret formula is really around that. Now, uh, John, there will be uh, new traders or new um, investors who are watching this video, this mm -hmm. um, uh, interview, uh, what would you suggest them in terms of how should they get started? Of course, one part you've already mentioned having a right education, mm -hmm. but what should they do? Maybe like what step one, step two, step three, to mm -hmm. practice credit spreads and see the power of it. And maybe you could also suggest two or three your favorite stocks for um, for doing stocks or whatever you choose underlying asset for trading the spreads. And uh, maybe just build one trade for them to have an experience like, okay, if you were to do how to do it. Wow, okay. <clears throat> for the beginner, I will always emphasize that learn, learn from the, okay, from a so-called reputable kind of the cost Okay, especially from the option pundit, which I personally, because I, I have also got, I'm, I get a lot of the advantage and a lot of the benefit out of this course. Even after one year, you, you know that almost every course, even the preview, I still attend it. Okay, because every time I learn something new, or maybe there is a lot of time, the syllabus, I may know it. 
However, the way of doing it or the way of changing it or maybe through the sharing that even from the beginner, we do look at it and we do look at it that we learn something. Okay, it may be a, a big loophole or maybe a big trap right, for the beginner. They don't see it, but we do see it. And then always we want to share with them, right? okay, <clears throat> I think first thing first is there's too many people want to make the money from tomorrow onward, which is instant. They want the instant so-called benefit or instant kind of the reward, which is the, if financial market can have an instant reward, I think it may not be for all of us, right? My financial market is a money market. It depends on how big, for how big capital that you have, how much that you can make, okay? And then how much risk that you are willing to take. So a lot of people is, when they start investing, I personally think that they don't know their risk about that. Okay, for me, I want to know every trade that I place, I want to know that is my maximum loss first. So okay. before making any money, I want to know what is my maximum loss. <clears throat> I do see some of the beginner is, they don't care about the loss. They always think that, as long as I follow the guru or as long as I do it, even do the right thing, they think that the market should should reward them. Okay, and the should is I am always skeptical. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And uh, about structuring a trade or giving some of your favorite uh, stocks for them to build trades? Personally, I more prefer to the index. Index, I will more prefer XPX. Okay, and XPX is if that is uh, during the downturn, most likely I will choose the 80, 80 probability or maybe 85 probability and okay. then get a fine point and then just sell the strike, just show the credit spread. That is one of the angle, okay? And sometimes people will say that during downturn, are you worried? You just manage to the DTE. If you sell three month DTE, based on today market, say for example, for the last, six days, four days is down. You just sell uh, 80%, three months. So-called three months, uh, three months to me is too far. Okay, maybe it sells 60 days. Okay. Yeah. It will go up, even it don't go up because it's 80%, meaning is there is a, there is quite a, quite a distance from the current strike until the 80% possibility that in the event the market don't move or the market moves slightly after 60 days, you will still collect the full premium. Okay, yeah. just that before seven days or before two weeks, come out and then grab the profit first. Don't wait, don't, don't, don't be like me, right? Always want to get more or think that I can get everything just. So sometimes I don't, because I currently I don't trade daily, even though I monitor it for a while. Yeah. It is, sometimes you just forget to close it then the market will teach you a lesson when there is a, when there is a downturn. So if I gather from your uh, perspective, look at SPX maybe as an underlying to open the credit spreads, look for a high probability trade and make sure what you are trading, you know it and make sure that you have the, you are monitoring your trade, not daily, but at least you're paying attention to it. So you are, not being, uh, you know, a sign or being having an issue in terms of negatively affecting your position, yeah. and uh, um, and and pay attention to the risk. Yeah. Is that a good summary of the thought process for beginners? Mm, yes. Okay. Because the adjustment side, I don't know whether to share or not. If after maybe one week, two week, uh, normally I follow the grid, the delta side, right? Okay. If the delta is really against me. I may decide to put another totally change my wheel because I don't firm up the wheel. I always focus on the market. What is the market sentiment or what is the market trend tell me? In the event I really need to put a backhaul spread, I will put it in in order to minimize. One thing is to neutralize my risk. Another thing is to get back some of the credit. So when I lose, I want to lose very small so that I have the double double kind of the credit in order for me to make big. Okay, so you are managing your risk quite actively as a like a seasoned option trader now by looking at your Greeks and looking mm -hmm. at the credit so that you can minimize the overall loss in the trade if it goes against you. Yes, correct. 
Okay, Fantastic. because I am more like what you mentioned, I'm more toward the risk management side. If I manage the risk, the money will come with. So a lot of time, maybe now I seldom focus on the I seldom focus on the day to day, right? Okay, what is my profit of the profit or loss of the day? To yeah. me is at the end of the day is when you want to look, just look at the neck leg, whether it's increased or not increased. I think that is more important. Other than that, I manage risk much more than the, than the so-called looking at the P&L. Wow, John, it's been, uh, it's been amazing talking to you and seeing your complete entire journey starting as a beginner all the way and uh, ending up into my Option Market Wizards show. It's, it's a fantastic journey. And I'm very, very proud of you and at the same time, very privileged and honored to have you on my show. It's great. My viewers are watching you, a real trader, sharing expertise on how he trades the market. I've seen you up and close and uh, I wish you continued success. Um, keep doing it. Keep rocking it. Yeah. Don't stop learning. Don't stop learning. Yeah. But it's, it's absolute pleasure to have you, John. Any final thing you would like to share with the viewers? Mm. Any message uh, you want to give to them? For me, okay. Uh, do one thing as one step, okay, and then take it slow, and then know, know, okay, as much as possible, okay, because the market, the market situation keep on changing, okay. So sometimes you may make profit, or maybe there is a continuous period that you make big profit. It doesn't mean that you will be always there. However, when we are winning, there is always a kind of the the illusion confident that you will owe, you think that the market is with you or you are the market. Uh, no, the market will teach you a very so called a very expensive lesson. Okay. So it's better that you always have something to preserve or contingency plan. Okay. Uh, one of the lessons learned that through the so called to my journey is don't over trade. Okay, I still remember my first three months to four months is almost every day I place a few trades. Okay, and today, after one year, no, I don't do all these things. Okay, I will trade when the high, purpose, high uh, probability or there is high chance for me to win. Okay, uh, still that uh, I may not have an aggressive profit yet because I don't do the aggressive kind of the over trade. Okay. It actually preserves my capital. And also, don't over allocate or don't over leverage because if you sell them too much, you need to watch out the margin. Okay, there is one point of time, uh, also during the March, there's a margin call for me also. Okay, because when the market is suddenly down, all your margin originally is 20%, and now it may be 40% or 60%, so suddenly margin call will shoot up. That is the uh, two things that. For beginner, you have to always remember, don't over trade or don't over leverage on the money market. Especially don't use the money that you need it or you are urgently need it and then think that the market will reward you. No, this is not a lottery game. This is kind of the trading and investing. And trading and investing actually take time to reap the reward. And those, those three are excellent, excellent point. Really, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you, John, for being here. And uh, it was my pleasure. Uh, it was my pleasure. Well. How you trade. And I'm very sure you, my viewers also enjoyed it. So, guys, if you are guys and girls, and if you've been watching this show, you enjoyed it, please leave a comment for John. If you have some questions, feel free to ask those questions as well. Uh, we'll ask John to stop by and sometime, you know, uh, answer your questions as well. Um, it, it, is, it is an absolute pleasure. Financial markets are there. It was there hundreds of years ago, and I can pretty much safely say it will remain hundreds of years, even in the future as well. Yes. But your capital is what you need to take care of. It may not be there. So play accordingly, trade accordingly, and make sure above all, you know what exactly you're doing, and only then get into it. So with all that, in the moment, for the moment, this is Manoj. I wish you wonderful time. Keep watching it, and I look forward to seeing you in my next show. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.